Hello everyone, this is Krode giving you a shoutcast in a game between ATN's Sock or Zroke, Zroke here on um, Tall Dream Altar. I know some of you guys ask me why do I pronounce Zoke's or Sock's name that way. I'm trying to do the German justice as that is how he pronounces his name. I could just do the normal English translation and call him Sock, but that's no fun at all. Anyways, we also have Kaz spawning as the blue Terran player here. So this is going to be Terran versus Protoss, and a couple of things to clarify. Um, if you guys watch my cast pretty regularly, you know that I was yawning in the other games. Sorry, I haven't been getting much sleep, but I do want to cast and I do want to watch these games with you. Secondly, um, some of you guys were like, how can you not know the 1-1-1 build as a Terran player? I obviously know the 1-1-1 build, but... The variation that I believe Puma used was that he delayed his gas just a little bit or he did something strange where he was able to get that second supply depot down earlier to do a complete wall off. But I also think it delayed his gas a little. So that's why I was saying that was a unique, unique variation on it. I'm not quite sure. Maybe I just missed something. But then again, at the professional high level of play, not only is it about the buildings that you have and the strategy that you're executing, but how you go about executing it. And his particular execution looked uh, looked a little different to me. Anyways, we're going to see now Zoke oh, perhaps opening up with a, uh, with a fast 15 Nexus. And this would be a very, very optimal opening um, as of late for Protoss players. Protoss players recently have been using the 15 Nexus to try to out-expand their opponent. The, uh, the popular Terran 1-1-1 play um, has been very difficult to try to, dis uh, try to overcome. And mostly a lot of Protoss players have been opting to expand a little bit earlier in order to get a strong economic lead and hoping that the mule advantage doesn't go too far in the Terran player's favor. We can see a tech lab now being added down by Kaz as well as he is opting to go for another supply depot here. A little bit strange, this may be more of a Reaper expansion build as I, I don't see a... F um, usually when you add on this first tech lab, it does delay your factory and no, it's going to be a Marauder. So a very, very early Marauder here on Tall Dream Altar and this particular build, until I see what the other buildings are and what exactly Kaz's strategy is, looks rather strange to me. Kaz, perhaps understanding the metagame, knowing that his opponent may try to go for a very fast Nexus on a map like this, opting to go for a Marauder Harassment and getting a little bit lucky with the Scout. So a very early Scout coming in from Kaz now with this SEV. The Marauder is going to push his way out. He may be able to even shut down this one particular probe. Yeah, one, two, uh, th one more shot would do it. And yes, a very long distance shot there. And down goes that unit. You can see a bunker now being placed down as well. A zealot trying to make its way over. This poor probe now being forced to pull back. This one marauder will have concussive shells in time. A second marauder also coming in. And you can see another barracks coming in as well. Concussive Shells has been completed, so now the Probe and the Zealot dealing damage over here. Gonna try to build this bunker at the same time, now backing off once more. It looks as though this Zealot will get shot down, but in the back it does get shot, and now in come some Probes. So the Probes are now gonna try to engage against these units here, and there is a Marauder on the low ground, and the Marauder from the low ground can actually offer a decent amount of cover. So this is gonna be rather strange, as that, Zealot, as that SAV trying to run away, able to slip by and nicely done there as Kaz now doing a bunker rush here. That probe, however, make it the last shot. Gets in the last lap. The probe now destroyed. The, that one zealot is going to fall rather quickly. There it goes. Now some probes are going to get taken down as we have a nice split here. Taking out another probe. Three marauders against a zealot there. And now a fresh marauder leading the way. This one zealot is going to have a bit of a problem. Getting so slowed down. That zealot low on hit points. Does get off one half of attack. Down goes the probe. Down goes that last zealot there. As Kaz opening up with a very aggressive... Um, a triple Marauder push here on Tall Dream Altar, and now this is much more of, of the metagame style play than anything else, and there are going to be a lot of reinforcements after the damage has been dealt. Um, it looks, taking a look at the Harvester count, 24 to 22 army-wise, though Zoke um, looking to be pretty confident right now. He is getting that warp gate tech, and I'm not quite sure why the Marauders are laying, laying or backing off. Um, they definitely don't have the numbers any longer, but with that warp gate research um, about to come online, Zoke will be able to reinforce his units much more quickly. The warp in time much, much faster. 
than the standard build time. So Kaz may be just trying to go in for a complete mass barracks all in, waiting for Stim to finish. Stim, the ever great equalizer or overpowered equalizer, depending on what side of the fence you are for Terran versus Protoss. Um, yeah, Stim versus those gateway units, very, very strong as Marines are going to be added as well. It looks like the attack will come in in about 40 seconds, meaning another round of Marines could be, are going to be trained. More Marauders going to be trained. We are also getting Combat Shield. That Combat Shield about, what, nowhere near being completed, about another 90 seconds or so away. So we'll see what's going to be happening here. The push may move out around the 8 minute 20 second mark. If I was to look at the time and try to uh, make any easy, easy predictions there, we are going into a Twilight Council, though, most likely to get into Dark Templars, as um, a Blink and Charge is not going to be enough to really shut down this mass Marine Marauder army. There are a lot of Marines here, a lot of Marauders. You can see the army size, just how strong it is. Production tab shows no more SCVs being trained. This is essentially an all-in since Kaz has... And pulled off all of his SCVs now to join in on this fight as the Marauders now simply make their way out. And and wow, this is really, really bad play by Zolke. Zolke doesn't even have this one Zelnaga Tower to know that the units are currently coming into the battlefield. SCV is now about to um, make their way to the halfway mark. There are going to be Stalkers here as well. Sentries are going to be in. There is four Sentries, so that's going to be enough for a little bit of warp in there. As he activate the Zelnaga Watchtower, just going to catch sight of that massive arm army there the marines going to make their way over is the probe going to be able to escape away no it is not and now these marauders are going to be perhaps taking the high ground advantage away from his opponent so you're going to see a perhaps a couple gateways scv now going to try to test the waters quickly get shot down there and now marauders coming in from the far side scv is coming in as well there's some force fields that's not going to be enough to really wall off and now this massive attack with scvs acting as of as of what a meat shield SCVs engaging, Marauders pulling back once again, Sentries trying to engage, but the Sentries are not going to deal enough damage as the Marines and Marauders doing that stutter step in, and Zolke getting completely destroyed here on Tall Dream Altar, there is the GG. So, uh, GG, Game 1 going to Kaz here on Tall Dream Altar, thanks for watching, thanks for listening.